pastor with Japanese International Baptist Church here in Tigard. And I also work with Washington County Housing Authority on a special program called Housing Work, which is a grant from the Department of Labor to help low-income families get career training and job placement. So I got to help people find jobs for living, which is really cool. My wife, Emily, and I also have our own ministry that we call Joy Incorporated. And our primary focus is to try and share God's joy with the people in our lives who need it the most. Um, and we partner with the county throughout the year, helping low-income families meet some of their basic needs. And, um, and I also teach the Strength Finders material. I'm a certified Strength Finder coach through Gallup. I first got exposed to this material in seminary. And then um, a few years after I graduated, my seminary professor started his own business called University Life Coaching. And the basic concept was to help college students increase their graduation retention by using this material. And so I was actually fortunate enough to get trained directly from Gallup, the producers of this material, on how to teach and coach on this material. And um, we use it in our church. We train our, our leadership folks on it. So I use it at work to help low-income families who are looking for work to identify their strengths and their skills. Um, it's, it's a wonderful tool. And although it's written in, in a secular form, one of the founders of the original material, Donald Clifton, is himself a believer. And as you look carefully through the explanations of the strengths and you see how they sort of interact, there's a great underlying theme of faith that's built right into this. And so this is Strength Finders 2.0, which kind of leads you to believe that there that is a 1.0. And this is actually a reboot of the original book called Now Discover Your Strengths, which was on the New York Times bestselling list for years and years. This material has been published and distributed in over 20 countries around the world. It's in over 40 different languages. And the research is about 40 years in the making. Most of you have heard of Gallup polls, right? Gallup is the organization that has put together this research. And the basic premise behind the Strength Finders is, let's stop focusing on what's lacking in people. And let's start a conversation about what's right with people. And it is through that research that this information has really come about. Common, <clears throat> me, common teaching would have you Look at your strengths and weaknesses. We all understand that we have both. And identify your weaknesses so that you can become a more balanced person. But what research has shown is that people who are achieving excellence in life did not get there by improving their weaknesses or focus on what is lacking in us. They got there by identifying what they're good at and determining to refine those strengths to a point of excellence. So people out there in the world who are excellent in their fields didn't get there by focusing on what they don't have, but by focusing on what they do have. And the book talks about this a little bit. And so that's the basic premise of this entire material, is let's focus on what I've got. And the framers of this research understand at, at a biblical level that we are created and endowed by God as he makes us in his image with certain natural gifts. Because we are all made in God's image, whether we are believers or not, God handcrafts within us certain strengths. Because we're not all created equal, right? We all have certain qualities that make us different than everybody else. And once we identify what our strengths are, it can truly help us understand the deeper issue of our identity in Christ. One of the great things about Pastor George's material, The Identity Project, is that it is all about discovering our identity in Christ. And with that new awareness of our true identity as sons and daughters of God, it's an incredibly empowering journey as we walk through that process to discover the unique person that God has made us to be. And once we understand that, we become truly dangerous people in the kingdom of God. The Strength Finders is just one piece of that bigger project, but it's a very tangible piece. Because a lot of times we have a blind spot when it comes to ourself and our own abilities. And the great thing about the strengths is that they are they are such an innate part of us that 
that what we do just comes out naturally. The things that we're good at come so natural to us that we don't even notice it. And because it's so easy for us, we assume that it's that easy for everyone. When in fact, um, the top five strengths that you all have, as shown in the report, that those top five strengths forms a unique combination of strengths that only one person in 10,000 has. That's why we are many parts to one body. We're not all meant to be the same. And I don't know about you ladies, but I've been in positions before where I felt like the square peg in the round hole and I beat myself afterwards because why I was so successful over here, why was I such a failure over here? I must have done something wrong. And it's only in hindsight that I realized I was operating completely outside of my strengths. I never should have placed myself in that position in the first place. And it's no wonder it didn't work out because I'm really good at this and not really good at that. And I learned not to beat myself up for not being all things to all people. God didn't create me to be all things to all people. So once I can figure out my unique makeup, then I can take that information and I can aim myself in very strategic directions. And that's one of the things that the book talks about, and that's part of the power of understanding what our strengths are. By the way, this is very informal, and so if you have questions about anything at any time, just feel free to holler out. What I want to do is just spend a few minutes talking overall about the strengths and their value and, and where they come into the identity project. And then I want to just have a chance to talk about some of your unique strengths that you got through your assessment. Because the strengths, the book does a really good job at explaining what each individual strength is. And your printout of your five themes is going to be slightly different than the, the definition of the book. I don't know if anybody's noticed that, but here's why. Think of these strengths kind of like ingredients. So garlic by itself has its own unique flavor, and that is the definition in the book. But your printout of your results takes into account how that one strength combines with the other four top five strengths. Um, because it changes, like when you add garlic to soup and you combine it with chicken stock and some other vegetables, it changes the flavor, they blend together to form this amazing unique you. And your printout will adjust for the other strengths that you have and it'll slightly vary what that strength looks like in you. Does that make sense? So I want to unwrap that a little bit and sometimes it's hard for people to see how those five strengths operate together. What I hear a lot from people is, well these four make sense to me but this fifth one I'm not so sure about. And then I hear a lot too, I understand the five, I just can't quite envision how they work together. Sometimes they seem to contradict each other. And God can be very strategic, even in that. And I'll give you an example. One of the strengths is positivity. Positivity is incredibly powerful because it allows us to see what's right, not just in us and ourselves, but in, in life in general. As believers, we should all have some level of positivity, right? But the person who has the strength of positivity is naturally gifted by God to see the world in a glasses half full perspective. But people who have the strength of positivity have to be careful because people who are negative can drain us and they can exhaust us. And we need to strategically recharge ourselves. So we need to ration the amount of time we spend with negative people if positivity is one of our strengths. So I want to talk about those things a little bit. The strengths, the book calls the strengths themes instead of strengths because they really are strengths that are sort of unrefined, unidentified, undeveloped. Um, but think of these strengths as sort of the difference between like an arm and an ear. Okay, there's no right strengths or wrong strengths, good strengths or bad strengths. They're all out there. They're all given to us as God has created us. And God has been very strategic in what he's given us and why. God has a plan for our life, right? Before he even created us, he came up with a plan for our life that would allow us to walk beside him and do something amazing. Because God doesn't do anything small, does he? Doesn't do anything small. And so the strengths that he's given us are intended to equip us to succeed in the plan he's come up with for us. So the strengths that he's given us are very, very strategic. And again, only one person at 10,000 has the unique combination that you have. So it's highly likely in your workplace, in your church, in your environment, you're the only one with that unique combination of strengths. Unless you go to a church that's bigger than 10,000 people or you work in a very large company. 
And so you are a very necessary element to be in there. And it's no fun being that square peg in a round hole, is it? We don't like that. We don't like the feeling like we're swimming upstream, that it's always more difficult for us than it is for a real nervous. That can be a really good signal that maybe we're operating not in our strengths, but in our weaknesses. And our strengths are only strengths when we're aiming them the right way, when we're following God's flow. Because the strength of positivity can be a weakness if I'm using it the wrong way, just like any tool. I can use a chainsaw to cut down trees. If I try and use it to slice my Christmas turkey, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a problem. And so I need to learn how to wield that tool effectively, right? So part of what I want to talk about today is there's sort of a natural process in discovering our strengths in affirming what those strengths are and then identifying ways where we can develop those strengths to their maximum potential. Because God has big plans for us, we want to do everything we can to step into agreement with him in those plans, right? And that means taking what he's given us and developing those strengths. And think of it as sort of like building up those muscles. Once I know that I'm an arm or that I'm an ear, I can strategically place situations in my life where I'm going to be strengthening those things that are already at work in me. Um, and as they develop, they become more and more effective. Make sense so far? Okay. So, let's talk just a little bit about what some of your strengths are. Anybody want to volunteer to share their strengths with me? Sure. Okay. What's your number one? Developer. Developer. Very nice. I like it. So you have read the definition of developer in the book? I did. I took this in 2013, and I did then, but I don't recall. I was going to review it before. And... Okay. So let's go through it real okay. quick, okay? Developer is awesome. Developer is actually one of my top five, so I'm a little biased, but... <laughs> is it yours, too, Sydney? Is that one of yours? Mine? No. No. None. Okay, developer. Okay. Developer, if you want to follow along, I'm on page 89. You see the potential in others. Very often, in fact, potential is all you see. In your view, no individual is fully formed. On the contrary, each individual is a work in progress, alive with possibilities. And you are drawn towards people for this very reason. When you interact with others, your goal is to help them experience success. You look for ways to challenge them. You devise interesting experiences that can stretch them and help them grow. All the while, you're on the lookout for signs of growth, a new behavior or learn, a learned or modified, a slight, a slight improvement in a skill, a glimpse of excellence, or some flow where there previously there were only halting steps. For you, these small increments, invisible to some, are clear signs of potential being realized. These signs of growth in others are your fuel. That's a key sentence you want to remember. They are your fuel. They bring you strength and satisfaction. Over time, many will seek you out for help and encouragement because on some level, they know that your helpfulness is both genuine and fulfilling to you. So a developer is really somebody who can look at others and just see tremendous potential. A developer makes a great discipler because they just have the natural ability to see not what's lacking, but what's there, to see that potential and have a desire to want to help that person grow and become stronger. It's a great, great strength. What's your next one? The next one is input. Input, yeah. Input is very interesting <clears throat> because it is very neutral all by itself. Input simply means that you have an innate desire to continually have information flowing in. And that can take a lot of different forms. It could be research, it could be collecting stuffed animals, it can be all kinds mm -hmm. of things. So input gone awry leads to a very crowded garage. <laughs> input can also make for a very powerful researcher, somebody who's constantly learning new things and taking in information. So your desire for input is, is gonna keep you from stagnating. It's gonna constantly draw you forward into the new. 
And as a believer, that can be very exciting because if you aim this strength towards God, you'll find yourself hungering for more of God, hungry for more of his word, hungry for more of his presence. So input can be a very, very powerful strength. Um, remember again, these strengths are, are given to us by God so that we can succeed in this plan we have for him. They only become weaknesses when we misuse them. If I am an arm and I purposely develop this arm, then my arm is going to become effective. If I try and hear with it or walk around with it, I'm going to fail. And there's nothing wrong with my arm. I'm just not using it the right way. So as we prayerfully bring our strengths that God has given us before him and we let the Holy Spirit guide us, we'll find that he's constantly leading us into situations where we can put our arm or our ear to good use. And so your input is very valuable because you're not one of those people who's content with the here and now. There's always something new and exciting over the horizon. Does that resonate with you a little bit? One of the really valuable parts of this process in, in utilizing our strengths, the first part is discovery, and that is what you've gone through in taking the assessment. Discovering what our true strengths were. And when I first took this test back in seminary, it was a real revelation to me because, because of the blinders that we often have in ourselves, it's hard for us to see these strengths. And these strengths often are so innate that we couldn't stop doing these things if we chose to. Um, you can't stop wanting to develop people, even if you wanted to. If you saw it, you'd be like, you know, I'm not sure I like this part of myself. You'd say, no, that's it, I'm done. I'm gonna, within a week, you'd be right back to it. It just is so natural, we can't stop doing it. And it's natural for a reason, because this is the person God desires you to be, because this is the person he needs you to be in order, in, in order to fulfill his plan for you. We all have a destiny, we all have a calling, um, and these strengths are designed to help us succeed in that calling. And at some point, if we become believers, the Holy Spirit comes along and brings spiritual gifts to add to that inventory, and these gifts all work together to achieve God's common goal for our life, which is amazing. And the more we unlock that, the more we understand our identity in Christ, mm -hmm. the more confident, the more uh, bold, the more empowered we are to really be God's sons and daughters. What's number three? Number three is connectedness. Connectedness. Very nice. Connectedness. Connectedness is really, really good. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right. Connectedness. Reading from page 73. Things happen for a reason. You're sure of it. You're sure of it because in your soul, catch that, in your soul, you know that we are all connected. Yes, we're individuals responsible for our own judgments and in possession of our own free will, but nonetheless, we are part of something larger. Some may call it the collective unconsciousness, others may label it a spirit or life force, but whatever your word of choice, you gain confidence from knowing that we are not isolated from one another or from the earth and life on it. This feeling of connectedness implies certain responsibilities. If we are part of a larger picture, then we must not harm others because we will be harming ourselves. We must not exploit because we'll be exploiting ourselves. Your awareness of these responsibilities creates your value system. Okay, so that's big. You are considerate, caring, and accepting. Certain of the unity of humankind, you are a bridge builder for people of different cultures. Mm -hmm. Sensitive to the invisible hand, you can give others comfort that there is a purpose beyond our human drives. The exact articles of your faith will depend on your upbringing and your culture, but your faith is strong. It sustains you and your close friends in the face of life's mysteries. Mm -hmm. You see as you read along here the biblical undertones of the language that they use. Um, if you're not looking for it, you might gloss it right over, but once you become sort of tuned into it, you can see that what they're really talking about here is something quite profound, beyond just intellectual research and psychology. Some things that are really hardwired into our DNA by our creator himself. Mm -hmm. So connectedness is incredibly powerful because it allows you to really see from God's perspective. You think God has 
the strength of co connectedness? Do you think he sees the interactive relationships yeah. between one thing and another? Absolutely, because he created all those interactive relationships. But the, the natural ability of having that awareness is amazing because it allows you to truly appreciate the consequences, the cause and effect, if you will. You're, you're, um, you're like a supernatural physicist. You understand the cause and effect at a very spiritual level. Um, that we're not all just out here doing our own thing. And you know, if it works for me and I'm not hurting anybody, that's just fine. You understand that life is not that simple, that it's far more complex. Mm -hmm. And that awareness of that fact that we're all connected gives you a sense of responsibility, it gives you a sense of purpose, and it creates a foundation for you that not only allows you to stand strong, but others who are around you see this foundation and they want to reach for it. Um, so it's very cool. Very cool. All right, what's number four? A learner. A learner. Wow. Oh, you are truly dangerous. <laughs> My wife is a learner. That's one of her top strengths. <coughs> learner is very, very similar to input in that there's a desire to have new information or new things coming in all the time, but it's a more focused aspect of strength. Learner is I don't just want new stuff coming into my life. I want new knowledge, new information. I want to know more. And so learner and input really have a interconnected relationship. The learner, they just, again, they're not satisfied with the here and now. There's always new information. You understand that knowledge is power, and that through that power, it enables you to do more and more and more. So learners are the ideal people to have on a team when something new needs to be done or new information or new resources are needed you're the kind of person that people look to for answers to new problems and new situations so your learner strength combined with your input strength makes you a pit bull when it comes to something needed to be done i have this person who's in this situation we need resources we need an action plan i don't know what they are we don't have enough information somebody needs to be willing to go start looking some of this stuff up you're the ideal person for that because you're going to just go out there and come back with all kinds of amazing and exciting information and combined with your connectedness which allows you to understand that we are all part of this circle of life for lack of a better term and your innate desire to help people you can begin to see now how you can use these strengths in a combination of ways to seek out information and to provide that for the people in your life that you know are looking for answers and use that information in a way that's going to encourage other people to build them up to allow them to grow what's number five includer oh my goodness mm -hmm. my goodness okay includer is great and it's one of the least complicated of the strengths to understand It rounds things out very, very nicely for you. As a matter of fact, includer and connectedness also have a strong relationship because the includer wants to bring other people into your circle of life and draw them in. You don't like to see people left out standing on the outside looking in. You have this amazing life filled with new information, filled with potential in other people, filled with the desire to learn and grow. You have this awareness that we all have this interconnected relationship that we're not all individual people running around and just living our lives, but we have this common destiny, this common purpose, this common origin. Your includer wants to bring other people and draw all of them into that reality and say, hey, come on in and be part of this. Um, and so, that can be powerful in a wide variety of applications. Mm -hmm. But can you see where these five things working together forms a very unique personality, if you will, that is incredibly gifted at making feel, people feel part of something, part of something 
special. And then once they feel part of something special, you've got the tools to help them go from that point and grow and develop and disciple. So mm -hmm. you can say, hey, come on in and be part of this exciting thing. And let me give you some information. Let me tell you what I've learned, what I've discovered. And let me help you take that discovery and grow. Any questions about that? Um, no, that's really interesting, and it makes sense, and I can see how that definitely shows up. And I'm curious, the sixth one was teacher. Okay. So did that play in? Teacher. To... Well, let's talk just a minute about okay. strengths one through five, and strengths okay. you know six through ten, okay. and so on and so forth, because there are thirty-four themes. Yeah. And so, our strengths are going to vary a little bit. Yes. Um, because there are seasons in my life where I might use my left arm more and there are seasons in my life where I might use my ear more. Yeah. And depending on the season of my life that I'm in, one strength might be more active than others. And again, it, it really depends on how strategically I am applying that strength in my life and what kind of path God is drawing me down. But what's in your top five can fluctuate a little bit. Your top ten is far more stable and solid and um, you know this this information is based on 40 years of research a lot of work has gone into it and it's it's pretty effective no assessment is 100% effective all the time but most people I talk to say yeah I really resonate with most of this stuff this is their intellectual property so you've got your five strengths for the cost of the book if you want to find out what your top ten are for a small fee you can get that expanded list Okay, if you want to find out what all 34 are for another additional fee, you can get that information. As a coach, I know what all 34 of mine are, and so I can see, um, it's kind of funny really, but the first time I took this assessment in seminary, my first year in seminary, positivity was in my top three. By the time I graduated seminary, I knocked down to 13. <laughs> now, I don't know what that says about seminary, but it's still in there. So. Your number six, seven, eight, they're, they're very applicable. They're very applicable. They may not be in your top five, but they're in your bucket of powerful tools. And depending on what you're going through in your life, yeah. they can move up, they can fluctuate a little bit. Yeah, okay. Um, yes? Um, I wonder if you have time to just give a summary of mine, because mine are not self-explanatory to me. Absolutely, absolutely. How are we doing on time? We're doing great. Yeah, we'll do yours next. Okay, when? Yeah, absolutely. So um, your top 10 are fairly solid. Um, and so it, it is valuable to know what is six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, and just remember that, that they can move around a little bit. Our strengths are, are not, it's not like you're gonna have a completely different set of strengths if you take this test you know, five or 10 years down the road. But you might see some fluctuation depending on what you're going through, what you're doing, what seasons of life that you've gone through. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the first step in using our strengths is to discover them. And that's what taking this assessment was all about. The second important step is to affirm those. And so I would say to you, if you've printed these results off and you've read through them, the first thing you should do is share them with somebody who knows you well and see what they say. And if they say, oh yeah, I see that in you, that's totally you, like some of you were doing when you were talking about this, really receive that, really receive that. That affirmation is important. And I would encourage you also to read all 34 themes. Get a good handle on your top five first, but then take the time to read through all 34. What you'll find, especially if you only know your top five, is that you might find some others in the book that you really resonate with. You might even say, well, that should be on my top five. It's probably six or eight or seven. It's probably in there somewhere. And if you read one and you believe that is so me, then affirm it, add it to your list. Um, because if you connect with it on that deep level and you really believe that it describes you, then it probably does. It just might not be in the top five. Okay? So, let's go. Okay, any other questions about your top five? Um, is there a place where it would have um, career types? That's an excellent question. Yes, with your printout and in the book, there are 10 action steps that comes with each strength. So if you've got five strengths, that's 50 action steps that you can take. And I'm gonna look up a couple just to, I'm gonna go to Includer. I'm gonna look up a couple just to give you some examples. 
it doesn't define necessarily specific fields, but it gives you some ideas about what types of fields might be right for you. And it also gives some tips about what kind of what kinds of situations you want to sort of aim yourself at so that you can develop those strengths. And sometimes even what kind of other strengths and other people you want to partner with to balance yourself out. I'll give you an example. One strength is called activator. An activator is a ready shoot aim kind of person. They are ready to start a project at the drop of a hat. And we need people like that because if you have a group of procrastinators and strategic people, they want to plan everything out to the nth detail before they're willing to get started. The activator isn't afraid of that at all. You come up with a great idea, they're out the door starting it right away. And sometimes that's exactly what we need. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes we need a strategic person to say, yeah, but before we do that, we need this and this and this in place. And so those two people working together can be more effective than each one individually. So for Includer, I'm looking at page 118, it says ideas for action. It says, the first, first bullet point, consider roles in which you can take responsibility for representing voices that are not usually heard. You will derive a great deal of satisfaction for being the spokesperson for these people. So that's very typical, the kind of suggestion. So it's not necessarily gonna say, go be a teacher, go be a salesman. It'll say, look for this kind of setting. And so if you're in a setting where you can speak for those who might not be willing to speak for themselves, you're going to derive a very deep sense of satisfaction out of that. And so you're going to find 10 suggestions for each strength. Some of them are related to activities that you could do. Some of them are related to career paths that might be a good fit for you. And if you can, if you can find a job where you're using all five of these on a daily basis, you're going to be one happy person. If and I, you're not, right. time to change jobs. So, and I would know that by going through the action steps and just being really intentional and mindful of what I'm doing. Yes. Sure that it's within my involvement. Absolutely. If you're unhappy with a certain aspect of your life, whether it's work or ministry or even home life, it may well be that you're not having opportunities to utilize these strengths on a regular basis. And if you find yourself in that position, you want to strategically look for ways to add that stuff into your life. If it's a job, and, and this is a really powerful thing, and this is kind of where it comes into the way I teach it to people who are looking for work. Know thyself. If you're offered a job where you're not going to be able to use these strengths, I don't care how much money they're offering you, run away. Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to succeed and you're not going to be happy. And there's no need to beat yourself up for that afterwards. If you're in a job where you can use three, four, or five of your strengths on a regular basis, you're going to have a deep sense of satisfaction. And you're going to rock, let's face it. We're good at what we do for a reason. And God gives us these strengths for a reason. When we use them, we become very effective. Again, Michael Jordan is a great example. It talks about this in the book. Michael Jordan was born with a lot of the physical attributes necessary to be a successful athlete. He had the height, and the strength, and the balance, and the agility. But combined with that, he practiced, practiced, practiced. And it is that practice, that focused concentration on developing his natural strengths that allowed him to rise to the top of his field. Now, he also tried to be a, an athlete in baseball and golf, but he did not succeed. And it might seem on the surface that these skill sets were the same. He put in the same amount of practice, but he didn't have the natural strengths to, to, to succeed in that area. And so it takes both things to achieve excellence. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. How early can people take these assessments? Like how, what age? That is an excellent question. It's difficult because you have to, you have to be able to understand the language of the tests mm -hmm. and you have to have sort of an, an, an understanding uh, because we answer these very innately without even thinking about it, right? Just boom, right. whatever comes right from your gut. But I would say, 12, 13 would be the minimum, depending on how aware your young person is, but this is a great tool for young people. I wish I would have done this when I was a teenager. It would have saved me a tremendous amount of heartache because I was one of those people who blamed myself for being that square pig in the round hole. That's my fault. I did something to screw this up. It's my fault that I didn't succeed, and it was only later that I discovered, of course I didn't succeed. 
Well, that, that is like number 32 on my list. Right. And it's the thing they needed most at this job. So it's very empowering if you're, if you're self-aware enough and mature enough to process that information. I would strongly encourage teenagers to go through this exercise. Cool. All right? Okay. Absolutely. So, now your connectedness was the same, right? So I'm going to leave that one. I'm just going to work around your number one. Oh, yeah. Woo. Fantastic. All right. Winning others over. So let's read that. Wu stands for winning others over. You have a powerful ability to influence others. I have a few friends who have Wu, and they are very exciting people to be around. Never a dull moment. One sixty-nine. Thank you. All right. Wu stands for winning others over. You enjoy the challenge of meeting new people and getting them to like you. Strangers are rarely intimidating to you. On the contrary, strangers can be energizing. Mm -hmm. How rare is that? <clears throat> you are drawn to them. You want to learn their names, ask them questions, and to find some area of common interest so that you can strike up a conversation and build a rapport. Some people shy away from starting a conversation because they worry about running out of things to say. You don't. Not only are you rarely at a loss for words, you actually enjoy initiating with strangers because you derive satisfaction from breaking the ice and making a connection. Once that connection is made, you're quite happy to wrap it up and move on. There are new people to meet, new rooms to work, new crowds to mingle in. In your world, there are no strangers, only friends you haven't met yet. Lots of them. Okay, so like with all the strengths, this can be a very powerful tool or it can be misused. Um, but you have the ability to do what most of us can't. You are comfortable to just walk up to a total stranger and, and strike up a conversation. You're a great evangelist. If you're not using evangelism in your ministry, it's just a powerful aspect of your life that's just waiting to just burst forth because you have the strength within you to, you're just, you're, you're not afraid of those awkward initiating conversations. They actually energize you, which is just incredible. Um, and so there are, you know, when we think of Wu, unfortunately we think of the used car salesman or the person at the call center. But imagine a child of God utilizing this tool for kingdom purposes. Imagine the person who can walk into a room and break the ice and kind of get things going and set the tone and, and get to know people. Um, for a lot of people, that initial contact is the most intimidating thing. And if you can go in and just break all of that down, then all kinds of amazing things can happen. And so you can go, you can walk into a room and have that initial conversation and you create the door for a developer to come along and say oh now that we all have gotten to know this person now i want to help this person and you're ready then to move on and break the ice with somebody else so it's a wonderful wonderful gift okay mm -hmm. what's number two uh, number two is futuristic futuristic excellent futuristic is in my top five So futuristic is simply that you are a person of vision. You like to think about what's coming down the road. You like to look forward. And you look forward typically, and, and again, these strengths are alive in everyone, not just believers, but in the believer particularly, we have a lot of hope. We have a lot of hope. And so when we look forward, we see hope. We see God's victorious plan coming to fruition. So. For us, the future is very, very exciting. Uh, my father is uh, approaching 80, and his health is not what it once was. He's not a believer. And so when he looks at the future, it's not a very happy picture. He looks back at the glory days of the past. And I've tried to encourage him to become a man of faith. And I've said, you know what? 
because of who I am and what I believe in what God has done for me, my best days are always going to be ahead of me. That will never, ever, ever change. And that's mm-hmm. pretty exciting to know that our best days are always going to be ahead of us. Mm-hmm. The futuristic person has the ability to look forward and it makes you a great planner. It, it, it allows you to do a couple of very amazing things. First, it allows you to give people hope because sometimes all we can see are those circumstances in our life. All we can see are the waves on the ocean, if you will. We can't see Christ standing on the other side with his outreached arm. But a futuristic person can help people look past the immediate storms in their life and say, hey, but this is right around the corner. This is just over the horizon. And it also allows us to be great administratively, to be great planners, because if somebody says, we need to hold this conference three months from now, and it's gonna be here on this date at this time, the person with the strength of futuristic can envision that moment in a way that other people struggle with. Um, And you can picture the event in your head and say, this is what it's gonna look like. This is what it's gonna be like now what are all the things necessary between here and here that are going to need to take place to make this happen? So you're a great person to cast a vision um, and how people see what's coming that they maybe they can't see, they can't see beyond today. And you can cast that vision in a way because to you it's so real, you could almost touch it. And the, the dangerous part about it is for you that because you've got woo in your toolbox too, not only can you share that vision but you're not afraid to go out and pull people into that and say, and you've got the connectedness piece too. These three are all connected together because they serve one common purpose and that you can, you can share your vision with people and you're not afraid to pull them in to your world and say, this is my vision, this is what I can see. And because of your woo, Wu is influence. It's not just bravery to go meet new people. It really is winning others over by having a positive influence on people. So you can influence people about the great vision that you see and you have this unique awareness of how connected we all are. These things all work together to draw people into your vision in a very, very exciting way. Make sense? Mm -hmm. What about number four? Adaptability. Ah, uh, yes. Adaptability. A very no strength. Do you want me to read adaptability? Sure. Okay. Okay, page 45. You live in the moment. You don't see the future as a fixed destination. Instead, you see it as a place that you create out of the choices that you make right now. And so you discover your future one choice at a time. This doesn't mean that you don't have plans, you probably do. But this theme of adaptability does enable you to respond willingly to the demands of the moment, even if they pull you away from your plans. Unlike some, you don't resent sudden requests or unforeseen detours, you expect them. They are inevitable. Indeed, on some level, you actually look forward to them. You are at heart a very flexible person who can stay productive when the demands of work are pulling you in many different directions at once. Now, this is really, really interesting because adaptability seems to come in contrast a little bit with futuristic because Here, you're looking forward, and here, you're sort of discarding what's forward and saying, well, yeah. Sometimes God gives us strengths that can allow us to be very successful over here that might interfere with our success over here. And to to compensate for that, sometimes he brings other people into our life that provide us with strengths that we're lacking in ourselves. And sometimes he gives us our own counterbalance Um, And in your case, that's what he's done, is he's given you the ability to look forward and envision a wonderful and amazing future. At the same time, he's given you the ability to not get so hung up on that future that anything that seemingly contradicts that 
drives you nuts. He's giving you the ability to roll with the circumstances of life, never forgetting the fact that life has got some amazing things coming down the road. And so adaptability is incredibly powerful because adaptable people are the people who stay with the circumstances, even when the circumstances can get a little bit crazy. They're not people who bail out at the first sign of trouble. They're not people who get upset when things don't go their way. They're not people who get upset when their, their carefully timed, planned agenda for life gets upset in the balance. So your strength of adaptability allows you to hold that vision of the future, but at the same time, appreciate the here and now. Because futuristic gone awry become so focused on the future that sometimes we take for granted what's going on today. I used to be like that. I used to be constantly looking forward to the next thing, and I wasn't always like present right in the here and now. And I discovered that I'm like, oh wow, I'm missing a lot of great things right now. Yes, what's coming tomorrow is also great, but if I could just enjoy right now, tomorrow will be enjoyable in its own time. And so you've got this great counterbalance going on, which is amazing because adaptability is in such short supply in our world today, isn't it? When people are ready to run each other over for being three seconds late, um, <laughs> adaptability allows us to say, eh, that's fine. That's fine. What's number five? Belief. Oh, yeah. Belief is great. Now, as believers, we all have a certain aspect of belief. But this belief, remember, is innate within everybody that God has given it to, whether they're believers or not. And it is an incredibly powerful tool. Belief is one of my top five. And belief actually works a little bit more like this, where you've got belief at the core, and you've got your other four circulating around that, because a belief forms the nucleus of everything else. So I want to read belief, because belief um, is really amazing. Okay, page 57. If you possess a strong belief theme, you have certain core values that are enduring. These values vary from one person to another, but ordinarily, your belief theme causes you to be family-oriented, altruistic, even spiritual, and to value responsibility and high ethics, both in yourself and others. These core values affect your behavior in many ways. They give your life meaning and satisfaction. In your view, success is more than money and prestige. They provide you with the direction, guiding you through the temptations and distractions of life toward a consistent set of priorities. This consistency is the foundation of all your relationships. Your friends call you dependable. I know where you stand, they say. Your belief makes you easy to trust. It also demands that you find work that meshes with your values. This is really, really important. And I know it's been for me too, that sometimes in my past, I have looked at other people doing other jobs and I've thought to myself, I couldn't do that. And at first I thought, well, what they're doing is important. You're no better than they are. And I realized it wasn't so much that I thought what I'm doing is more important than what they're doing. I've just come to realize that what's important to me, I have to do. I cannot do a job day in and day out that I don't believe is valuable. I just can't do it. And so if I get laid off of work, I can't go pump gas. It's not that I feel like I'm above it. It's not like I don't need the paycheck, but I just can't do it. I've, God has put something in me that drives me to do something of significance. I can't not do it. Um, and belief does that for us. It creates this very strong foundation that is drawing us into a life of significance. And that foundation actually provides a safe harbor, not just for you, but for all the people in your life, because they, that belief makes you a person of tremendous consistency, and it causes people to trust you, because we see that in the storms of life, you are unwavering, and that can be um, a very comforting thing for people who tend to write through life like this. So belief is amazing. So you've got some great, great things in your toolbox that allows you to be a person who's very stable, who's very adaptable to life, and yet at the same time has this amazing ability to have vision 
and to want to draw people into that vision and make them all feel like they are part of this amazing world that you have a handle on. So great, great stuff. Any questions about any of that? No, you really explained it well. Good, good. And I can see where you at sometimes in your life. Parts of those are stronger. Yeah, it really depends on what you're going through in your life. And and we, even though we can't shut these strengths off, we can aim them in God's direction. Mm-hmm. So as we become more aware of what they are and how they work, um, we can look through the action items, and I strongly, strongly recommend that you look through all the action items for all your strengths, and then really get to know them. And and we need to be strategic, and that's sort of the last part of the, the five basic steps of strengths, is first we discover what they are, and next we affirm what they are. And then what we wanna do is we wanna work on developing strategies so that we are placing ourselves in situations where our strengths are going. And then we wanna get out there and apply our strengths and load them up because remember, God gave us these strengths and gave them to us for a reason. And that reason is to bring him glory. Um, I often talk to people about magnifying God. Scripture tells us to magnify God, right? When we magnify something, we make it bigger, clearer than what it appears. And sometimes when God does something amazing that we don't always understand, we have a choice to make. We can kind of blow it off, oh, that's just coincidence, or this time, you know, God didn't know what he was doing. We can minimize God, or we can magnify God. And we can choose to say, I don't understand what God is doing, but because God is God, he's got this. He is doing something even more amazing than I can understand, and I trust him with it. And in the same way, I want to encourage you to Look for opportunities to magnify your gifts, to bring out the excellence in you. Because again, only one person in 10,000 has this unique combination that you all have. And God gave us these strengths so that we could magnify Him and follow the path that He has for us. I'll leave you a few of my cards as well if you want to contact me in the future if you have more questions about this. I really love to be able to help people walk through all five of their strengths like this. Um, at our church, we have a group of people who disciple others, and so both the mentors and their protégés are part of this group that we call DNA, because we sort of comprise the DNA of our church. And right now we're going through the spiritual gifts, and we're sort of, we, we've gone through these last year, so now we're sort of tying them in. Here's your natural strengths, here's your spiritual gifts, here's how they work together to form that unique identity in Christ that you each have. Um, And it's frustrating when you're that square peg in a round hole and you just feel like you're not using your gifts, you're not happy, it just, when you're you're in situations where you're operating out of your weaknesses, it just kind of sucks the life out of you. You come home at the end of the day tired and exhausted and stressed and frustrated. But when you're using your strengths, you come home energized and, understanding what our strengths are and how they operate allows us to be very strategic in the situations we place our life in. So it's okay if somebody comes to you and says, if, if woo is not one of your strengths and somebody comes to you and says, I need you to be a greeter, I need you to go introduce yourself to all these people, and you know that that's, you can say, no. You know, it empowers us to know who we are. You can say, that's not my strength. You know, we can't always do that, I'm a father, Changing diapers is not one of my strengths, but I can't just say, I'm sorry, honey, that's not one of my strengths. She's like, it's not mine either. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes we have to take turns doing things that that we're operating out of our weakness because sometimes life just insists upon it. But on a day-to-day basis, we want to look for opportunities to operate within our strengths. And if we can find those opportunities, we will find ourselves being far more fulfilled and energized and we'll, be, we'll become the excellent people, the people that God created us to be. So, thanks very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.